I'm going to put these two axes through a series of tests to see if the cheaper American-made version can hold up to the premium Swedish axe, the Grand Force Brooks. Now you'd probably like to own the GB small forest axe, but the premium Swedish, Swedish, premium Swedish axe does come with a premium price. Is it really worth $200? What if we can get the same job done for less than half the price? Here's my verdict if you wanna save a little bit of time. I would save your money and buy American. So here's how we'll go about this. First, I'll tell you what I know about these axes. Uh, then we'll give the Snow and Neely a tune-up because it's not ready to use. And then most importantly, uh, we'll put them through a series of tests to see how they perform against each other. And I'll give you my take on it. The reason I have the Snow and Neely Hudson Bay axe is I purchased this as a gift uh, to give to one of my friends who needed something that had uh, similar capabilities of the small forest axe. Um, and he's planning some winter backpacking. Um, it's an ax that can be wielded with two hands if necessary, but can easily be used with one. And it's small enough to pack. With tax and shipping, the Snow and Neely Hudson Bay only cost me about 90 bucks. And the Small Forest ax runs about $200 before tax and shipping. I have owned this GB Small Forest ax for many years. Uh, it has traveled with me through four years of van life when I was nomadic. Um, and then once I settle down a little bit, it, uh, it'll, it stays in my truck during camping season and it rests for the most part um, near my wood burner to split kindling. And I actually just used it yesterday. Um, I took it out uh, at a very precarious spot to limb up a small tree that I was um, trying to, to pull out for firewood. I love it, it's a great ax. Now this is not a perfect size comparison. The Snow and Neely handles sort of leapfrog uh, in length and size compared to the Grand Force. Uh, so this one is 23 inches long uh, in total, and this one is 19 inches long in total. Now, if you were to go up a size in the GB, you get to 25 inches, which in my opinion, sort of takes it out of the realm of an ax that can easily be used with one hand. Uh, and if you go down a size, in the Snow and Neely, it goes down to 18 inches. So there's not a perfect comparison, but this seemed to be close enough for me. Here's how the Snow and Neely Hudson Bay ax arrives. Uh, first of all, you do have a sheath. Uh, it seems like they were able, able to save a few bucks by um, not having the sheath wrap all the way around the uh, tip of the ax. Um, so saved a few bucks there, but at least it comes with one. A useless card that talks about how good their product is, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, the top does have a layer of black paint on it. There's a few stickers uh, on the metal and on the handle we'll get rid of. Um, and the handle is substantially coated with, um, you know, a thick layer of polyurethane. So we'll get rid of that. And uh, this thing is dull, dull with multiple L's. Uh, you couldn't really cut yourself on this if you tried. So you, you, will, need, you will need to do a proper sharpening uh, before you use it. Um, but again, maybe that's um, a way that they were able to shave off uh, a little bit of the cost. So if you don't mind sharpening your own ax out of the box, uh, this could work out well. This is my Grand Forest Brook Small Forest ax. Um, this does come with a nice sheath, a little bit higher quality than the Snow and Neely one. Um, you can see my handles, you know, a little bit worn and, and, and uh, darkened with age. And it's got, you know, it's had uh, several layers of oil put on. You know, I've dinged up my blade uh, a little bit by being a little careless here and there. Um, but uh, since we're gonna sharpen up the Snow and Neely, we can just be fair to this and, and just edge that up a little bit. So here's what the blade looks like right when you get it. Uh, I just own one coarse stone and I own one fine stone. I don't go crazy with like all the different grades or the, um, you know, the grit. Um, you could spend a lot, a lot of time doing this. And uh, you know, sometimes it's fun, but sometimes you just need to get the job done. And since we're sharpening the Snow and Neely, it's only fair. We just give a little bit of a, a little bit of a fresh edge to the, the GB. I almost forgot one thing. We're gonna do a quick paracord wrap here at the, the ax head um, to serve as a protection for, for overstrike. Um, and it's also just nice to have 
uh, you know, eight feet of paracord handy when you're going camping. All right, so it's been a few weeks and I've got to spend some time with this ax. And here's my verdict if you wanna save a little bit of time. I would save your money and buy American. I would buy this ax or something very similar. So I put this thing through a series of tests to see how it perform against the Grand's Force. And I think it did great. So I did five things you would normally do with an ax like this. Uh, first thing I did was I limbed up a tree like if you were in the back country gathering some easy to find firewood. Uh, I split a bunch of kindling, both inside and outside the house. I did some very basic hand carving to test out that feel with the one hand, like if you're gonna make, say some sort of a stake out of a tree limb. I split a handful of logs, both small logs, medium sized logs, very dry, and also some kind of green logs. Uh, and then the last thing I did is I actually chopped down a friggin' tree. Um, and it did great. It did great with all those things. Um, you know, like you would expect, having a sharp edge makes a huge difference. And then also with some of those tasks, uh, you know, this is not made to chop down a tree, so a shorter handle is gonna be a little bit of a handicap in that sense. Um, and comparing it to the Grand's Force, um, anything with one hand you know, in, in this, these models specifically speaking, anything with one hand felt better with the Grand's Force because the head's a little bit smaller, the uh, handle is a little bit shorter, and anything that I wanted to do with two hands, like splitting, uh, this felt, this had a little bit of an, of an advantage because the head's a little bit heavier, the handle's a little bit longer. Um, and so, you know, with some of that stuff, it's really just, it's, it's more of uh, the mentality, it's the wizard, not the wand uh, type situation. Uh, where if, if you kind of know what you're doing, any any decent tool is gonna get the job done. And so if if you're okay with tuning this up out of the box, especially with you know how the blade comes, it's not sharp at all. Um, if you're okay with doing those things, I would say save your money and buy American. Mm -hmm.